Hi, my name is Jack Buckley. At age 14, I decided to follow my dream by creating and releasing a feature film that was shown in theaters and inspired kids around the globe. There are many kids who waste their childhood on things that won't bring them a good life, but I believe in us getting out there and following our dreams while we still have a chance. Now is the time to create. Welcome to The Jack Buckley Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Jack Buckley Show, the show about inspiring young creators to follow their dreams. Today, we're talking with Joseph Allen, singer, songwriter, and YouTuber, and also Golden Buzzer winner on America's Got Talent. Let's go talk to him. So, Joseph, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, man. So, my name is Joseph Allen. A lot of people recognize me from America's Got Talent. Um, on the show, you know, I got what's called a golden buzzer, which helped allow my whole like entire career basically to get started in the entertainment and music world. And um, yeah, you know, currently putting a lot of focus onto my YouTube channel, uh, putting a lot of focus onto new music coming out with like a new album on the way. And uh, yeah, you know, just all around, just trying to find different ways to keep people entertained, especially right now, um, you know, in this whole time of like Corona and everything, you know. Definitely, yeah, yeah. So, so my first question is that you have this, you have this insane energy that's like super infectious. So, is that I something? Appreciate that, Jack. Yeah, you got it. So, is that something you've always had, or have you developed that over time? Yeah, nah. So, I was the youngest out of like twelve kids uh, growing up, and because of that, you know, the youngest kid is always trying to get all the attention and stuff. And um, I think the reason that gets developed is because when you're the young kid. For example, like uh, when I was in the first grade, you know, the older kids would sneak out of the house to go ding dong ditching and stuff like that. <laughs> and they would uh, they would wake me up, you know, sneak me out the window with them. And I was hanging out with kids that were way older than me. You know, the only way you can impress kids that are older than you is like by trying to do things that makes them go, ooh, you know, like this little guy, he's super dope, you know? So um, I feel like that energy just got developed as a kid. And then as I got older, you know, it just tried to really hone in on that. but. Also, I just always see the best in people. Like, um, you know, I always tell my friends, like, you can stab me in the back, you know, with the lights off. When the lights come back on, it can be me and you in a room, and I'll ask you who did it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I just try to see the best in life, you know, and from there, you know, by, by trying to find the best in life, that's how you get the best out of life. Definitely, yeah. All right, so, you, yeah, so you have this mentality, this mantra, attempt impossible that you live by, right? So. Um, when you say you're doing something, you're going to do it. For instance, yes, apart from the golden buzzer, you walked 48 miles in 48 hours just to inspire people. So what created this mentality and why do you think it's so important? A lot of people, a lot of people struggle to do things that they believe like can get them to where they want to be in life. And they struggle to do it because they don't have the people around them telling them that they can, you know? So for me, like, I know that I've been blessed enough to be in a position where I have eyes on me. It's like if I have eyes on me, I need to make sure that I'm using that the right way. So, you know, I just want to try and inspire as many people as possible to attempt their impossibles, right? So, for example, like, like me and my friend right here, Sean Cantrell, we're traveling right now and we're on our way to do something that seems completely impossible. We're, we're on our way to find someone in the YouTube space that, um, you know, has a, a very strong following and a committed, a committed fan base. And myself and my friend are are new to the whole YouTube world. We're trying to figure out like who we're gonna be as individuals, like in the public's eye. We've both been blessed and lucky enough to where we have an amount of eyes on us. And, you know, we're both, we were both having a discussion actually before getting onto this, uh, onto this call where um, we were explaining how when people look at the things that we do, we don't want people to say like, ooh, they try and do different things, but instead like they achieve it, they're go-getters, they make it happen. And um, I feel like, you know, I just want to inspire as many people as possible to go be go-getters and go make whatever it is happen that, you know, will make them happy in life, you know? Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah. And uh, additionally, your, your new clothing line, based off your mentality, Attempt Impossible, is dedicated to helping people. So what's the thing you're most excited for about that? Like, yeah, so with the brand Attempt Impossible, I've set it up to where every month there's new missions for the brand. So um, when I, what I mean by new missions is every month there's a new target goal for us to achieve for that said month. So this is the month of July. Our target goal is to feed over 100 homeless people in L.A. Uh, next month, our target goal is to provide $1,000 for someone who wants to chase their dreams. Um, you know, and it's just, you know, finding different missions to keep the brand motivated to make a difference, right? Because you don't just want to have shirts with your face on it and call it a brand. You know, you want to really make sure that 
what you're doing can create a community of people that you know can make a difference so that's the whole mentality behind the Tim Possible. Definitely, yeah. That whole that whole mentality. A lot of people would just put their their face on a shirt and be done with it. But you know, you you go the extra mile and do that sort of thing. So, overall, in exactly, in, in life and in general, what's your driving factor? Like your end goal and the thing you strive for. I'm trying to I'm trying to set up a system to where myself and my future family are taken care of. Right. So that's really my end goal. Is like once I settle down with a shorty and make her my wife, and you know, we start popping out some kids everything i want to make sure that myself the kids we're all in a system that's set up to where financially we're, we're stable um you know i've done everything necessary to make sure that they have a good head start to where they can also you know chase their dreams and be you know a blessing to society rather than you know the opposite definitely yeah and so with america's got talent the struggle of getting on there for what was it five years um yeah yeah that must be research yeah, that must have been tricky. So what kept you going during all those years? Um, just knowing in your head, like, who you are, right? Like, that's the biggest thing, man. It's like, I already knew I was someone who goes on to America's Got Talent and crushes it. Just America's Got Talent didn't see that yet. So I kept showing up until they saw how serious I was. And once we both lined up, that's when the magic happened, you know? So whatever it is you want to do in life, right? Like, people are going to ask you years from now, like, what got you into trying to do, like, the whole, like, interviewing and hosting and you know maybe even talk shows that you're doing in the future they're gonna ask you you know why'd you why'd you do it for so many years you're not gonna think about it like oh dang that's right i was doing it for years you're just gonna think back and say like it's what i wanted to do it's who i saw myself being so then when you are that person and everyone looks back at the years on it it's it's almost gonna feel strange for you to answer that question because it's gonna be like i've always known this is who i was you know yeah for sure i can definitely see that yeah um so um, what's the biggest thing you learned from going on America's Got Talent? Uh, the biggest thing I learned from it is, you know, you have to always stay uh, vigilant with your mental health, right? Like you have to always try and be clear with what direction you're trying to head in, like what's the message you're trying to convey and, you know, try your best to to stay in a position to be that person because it's very easy for people to get jaded or for people to change with any any level of success you know so you want to make sure that mentally you're in a you're in a state of mind where you can stay true to your finished mission right so i've always known my mission is by the end of this when i'm in my late 20s around 28 early 30s is to have everything set up to take care of myself and a family so because of that you know i it was very easy for me to understand any decisions i made while on the show, do they line up with my end goal? And if not, you know, I move on from it. So um, the biggest thing I learned from America's Got Talent is how to be mentally strong, you know, in what you're trying to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so uh, at the time of recording, you're currently embarking on this one month journey where your Instagram followers tell you what to do. So what's one thing you've already learned from this journey? Um, <laughs> rest, making, making sure that you're completely charged up to keep giving people you know the, the best version of yourself you know I have to I have to stay on top of um, uh, my health you know and everything like that um, but yeah the biggest thing I've learned also is just like commitment you know like be committed to actually doing what it is you say you're gonna do right like we're now nine days in and I've stayed committed to it and already the results of um, my drive I see it's changed a lot where you know, I'm currently embarking on this journey where I'm going out to, you know, push my limits and attempt what seems impossible. And, you know, it's just, uh, you know, just push yourself. See the best version of yourself and be that. For sure, yeah. And so, you know, with your YouTube channel, you have a lot of different videos. So what's your favorite video, maybe most insightful video you think you've ever made? <laughs> Wait, not that you think you've made, but you know what I mean? <laughs> what's, what's the favorite video I've posted? Yeah. Um... My favorite video I've posted? That's a good question. I don't think I've posted it yet. Hmm. Yeah. The fact that no video sticks out to me right now lets me know that I still haven't found what it is that, um, that cause I could say the cliche thing and say like, you know, um, the favorite video I've posted is the one that's got the most views, you know, but um, I don't feel like I'm in a rhythm yet on my YouTube channel where I'm posting stuff 
where I'm like 100% like, yes, this is, this is 100% like what I'm supposed to be doing on the channel. I'm still finding myself on YouTube. Yeah, definitely. But what, like, if you were to look back at your channel, what would you say is like the most insightful uh, video you've ever posted that, that, that gives maybe a new light to something or makes people think in a different way? My video with the most views because it was a cover of um, of some song, I, I forget the name of it, but the cover of that song uh, taught me that YouTube copyrights, you know, when you sing other people's music, it shows me that, um, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of different things analytically speaking on YouTube that I wasn't aware of. So it's just uh, YouTube is an entire business, you know, and uh, you have to understand the algorithm and how everything works in order to find success on it. So that's sure. what's inside. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have so, you have so many videos in your channel that, that definitely make you think in a different way. I mean, from yeah. your from the video about the homeless for 24 hours, the the walking 48 hey. miles. Oh, yeah. Props to you. Um, so. Thank you, Jack. Um, yeah. So you definitely deliver to your fans, in your words, giving a quarter to everyone who gave me a dime. So from that, I'm wondering, what do your fans mean to you? Man, my boys did his research, <laughs> man. Oh, Jack, you're built for this, bro. Thank you. Uh, shoot, man, that threw me up. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> it was, the, uh, I said, do you, you definitely deliver to your fans, and then I gave you the quote, and so from that, I was wondering, what do your fans mean to you? Well, my fans mean to me. My fans mean the world, because it's literally, because of the fans, the type of life that I live, you know, so I'm trying my best right now, you know, to deliver, like, some of the best stuff that I can for them to make sure that they see how much I take them seriously. But you know, that's gonna come with time, right? Like any relationship that a person builds, like you gotta keep showing up and keep, you know, showing what, what, you're, um, what you're all about in the relationship and keep bringing what you're bringing to the table. So, you know, my fans, I think over time will start to really realize how much I um, I really care about providing quality stuff for them, you know? Yeah, for sure, definitely. And you know, on that note, listening to your music it's it's really relatable and it connects with the audience so was that something that was intentional when you were writing those songs yeah that's the goal that's the main reason i write the songs is i try and i try and make the songs for people you know so i try and make the songs to where um i, I have a specific demographic or a specific person in mind if i'm making a song and i'm thinking about um one of my friends like a girl who uh, just got into a breakup and how she's like so heartbroken, then I might make a song that I think might make her feel better than any other girl in that position, right? Or if I'm making a song about how um, how much I enjoy life, right? Like I'll try and like think about everyone who's enjoying life and think about how can I make a song that speaks to everyone. So, you know, that's the main thing is trying to make songs that are gonna relate with people, you know? Yeah, definitely. And, um... Your songs also have really, really good replay value. So the type of flow of each song has the type of, the type of flow that each song different each different song has. Um, you know, it, it doesn't it makes it so it doesn't get old very easily. So did you write those songs with that in mind? Uh, I think the reason that happens is because there's substance, right? So um, if I make a song where it's just hippity dippity skippity flippity, right? Like that'll sound good for a day or two, but then after that, like there's not really much you're taking away from the song rather than just the flow and the bounce. But you know, you say some stuff that, that has some lasting value to it. I think the song will remain for those who, you know, um, for those who actually connect to it. Definitely. Now you, you also produce your music. Have you not produced some of your songs? I'm not sure in terms of like, yeah, so I would say about 80% of the songs that I release, or the songs that I make, I produce them. Um, yeah. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll like uh, find an instrumental, lease it, and things like that. But yeah, pretty much for the most part, I try and have my hand in the whole production process. Yeah, so what's your favorite part about producing music? I would say when the song comes together, when it sonically sounds really beautiful, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's going to be... That's gonna be something. I feel like that's that's my favorite part is when it comes together. Definitely, yeah. And so, what's your biggest tip for anyone starting out in the music industry? Because this show is all about inspiring young creators to follow their dreams. You perfectly align with that. So, what would you say to any kids or maybe even young adults wanting to start out in this industry? Just don't stop. Just don't stop. Like that's, and then don't think that it's hard. Everybody, everybody who who has it done it in 
like what it is they're trying to do. They think that things are hard. Like for example, the fact that me and my boy are on the road right now, right? Like if anybody were to say to go from California to Florida to try and take him find, try and find this, like they'll say it's hard. But nothing in life is hard. Just get out there and do it. Yeah, the, definitely. The, the easiest thing to do is to say something is hard. That's it. The easiest thing to do is to is to give up and be like, yo, like, all right, cool, like this ain't it. But nothing's hard, man. Like if you wanna if you wanted to create an airplane, right? And like it's never been done before. The Wright brothers, like it wasn't hard. Like they knew they wanted to create an airplane, so it was easy. Create an airplane. If I wanted to be a musician, it's not hard. All right. Be a musician. Whatever it is you want to do, like people are gonna tell you it's hard, but it's not. Just be that. If you wanna be in the NFL, all right, go to the NFL. Like it's that simple. Make it happen. So yeah, just don't stop it, you know? Whatever it is you're trying to do, like so hopefully this video that we're making will be a testament to that, right? Where, For sure, yeah. You know, like, um, like a lot of people are scared to chase after, you know, what it is, whatever it is they're trying to chase after and things like that. But like I said, you know, like if you want to be an astronaut, be an astronaut. If you want to create the world's fastest car, create the world's fastest car. It's literally that simple jack so if i were to give any piece of advice to anyone it's just do it so like with this video we're making man that's my main goal is to show people like we said we're gonna find danny duncan and his videographer we're gonna pick him up and get him to la all right it's that simple and that's exactly the mentality i believe we both share it's just okay let's go do it and then when people see us do it hopefully their takeaway is whatever it is i'm trying to do in life i can do it you know, and that's also the main reason why I created Attempt Impossible is to make it to where people can see all you have to do is at least attempt it. Don't look at it and be scared of it. We could have looked at this whole situation and been like, oh man, like we can try, but uh, it'll be hard, you know. That's the easy thing to do. But, you know, whatever it is you want to do, just do it. Definitely, yeah. So, um, you know, in your songs, you also have characters like Uncle Gerald or Charm and Bliss from Criminal Love. So how did you create those characters? Was there an intentional time where you made characters or did those stories just kind of pop into your head and you turn them into song? I like telling stories, man. So I feel like that stuff just came to my head. And at the moment, I was just like, nah, sounds like a fun deal. So definitely. That's what I do, man. I, I typically just make the songs at however I'm feeling at the time, you know? So uh, how do you think of concepts or ideas for songs do you need to seek inspiration or are the ideas pretty easy to find for you um it all it can just come from like my life right so like if i were to like try to write a song tonight you know right now i'm on the road so like it might have some lines in there where it's like on the road chasing dreams if i struggle to find anything from my own life then what i do is i just think about like stories that friends have told me or anything like that and then I might like mix in things from my life or like this, like create like, you know, moments, create, create moments in those songs that, you know, are able to speak to people. For sure, yeah. And so you started producing music in 2015, right? Correct. All right, so both making a rap for your, your college and a song for your mom. So how would you say you've grown over these last five years? I'm um, just kind of settling into finding who I am as an artist. You know, I still feel as if I'm on that journey of uh, finding myself as an artist. But for the most part, it was just it went from learning. It's just a learning experience. So over time, just getting more comfortable with everything, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So who are your personal biggest inspirations, both in music in general and in general, rather? Uh, Drake. Drake is someone that I look to in terms of success in the industry. He's found a way to create a, a cult-like following. Um, he's he's done the music part right, um, you know, and it's just trying to uh, trying to recreate, you know, like a similar type of um, mentality in you know trying to do nothing but greatness in the in the whole music like world, you know. Definitely, yeah. And so, how would you say your music and your YouTube channel work together? Uh, like Will Smith, right? 
right? Like Will Smith, he's known for his personality, but he also does music. Um, I, I believe that's what I'm on track to solidifying is um, people seeing me as a personality, someone who you know creates moments, but also you know does music. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not an artist. I'm not a, I'm not a musician. I'm Joseph Allen who happens to also make music. You know. Yeah, definitely. That's how I view myself. Mm -hmm. Understood. Yeah. Um, you have a new album coming out. Um, so. What's the biggest thing you learned when making this album? No, no spoilers necessary. Uh, I believe the biggest thing that I learned while making this album is trying not to force it. Right? So, you know, if you try and force a song to sound good, it's not going to happen, man. Music is like conversating with a, with a female, right? It's like when you're trying to talk to her, like if you try forcing the relationship, it's, you know, and you're making a relationship with your listeners. You know, they can tell if it's trying to be forced. And then most likely if they tell that it's trying to be forced, you know, they just walk away. So, you know, trying to make sure that there's um, actual intent and quality behind the music. So that was the biggest thing I think I, I took away from making this album. Gotcha. And um, albums are big deals in general and they take a lot of time to, an effort to produce and create. Right. So on top of your new album, what respectively have you learned from each of its predecessors? And I'll, I'll, I'll list them so then you don't have to. So college lifestyle first. What, what did I learn from like each album? Yeah. College lifestyle teaches me that when you're really having fun making the music, it'll do really well. Um, what was the one that came after that? Lemonade for Sale? Lemonade for Sale is what taught me that when you try to force it, it uh, the music just doesn't feel as, um, fun in the process i still feel like i made some decent music on that project but i do feel as i was reaching a lot i can tell when looking back at it the level of reaching i was doing you know when trying to make those songs um college rules that was a very fun album to make um that one i guess taught me um making the project and then yeah the current one is i'm really excited to see how people yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> so you always emphasized your family and your journey. So how have they helped you to the place you are today? My family's helped me out because they've always just trusted me whenever I wanted to like do different things in terms of chasing my dreams and things like that. So, you know, because they trust me, I just want to always prove them right. So my family believing in me has been the biggest like thing for me to, I guess, get to where I'm at today. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So if you could tell kids watching who want to follow their dreams one thing, what would it be? Yeah, the, yeah. One thing, the one thing I would tell kids, the one thing I would tell kids is just believe in yourself. Believe in what it is you're trying to do. Even if your parents tell you that it's not what you should be doing or, you know, that you can't do that, like, believe in it, you know? Yeah, definitely. That's the biggest thing. As long, sure. as, long as you see it, you can do it. Definitely.